Uh, I'm Zufan Tajuddin from the University of Western Sydney, and this is a collaborative work with uh, uh, many people from uh, Smeru Research Institute uh, in uh, Jakarta, Indonesia. Okay, this study is more on country study rather than a specific study on inequality. So to locate the issue in the broader uh, theme of the conference, if you want to see two effects of inequality, one is on the economic side, on the efficiency, growth, economic performance, and then you can think of the effects of inequality on the social side. So on the social side, that's what we mean by the stability here. So stability, we mean the societal stability. When it comes to stability, uh, we don't have the direct measurement of what do we mean by social stability. So here we reduce our attention to violent conflict and violent crime as the proxy to uh, measure uh, societal stability. Okay, so this is roughly the structure of my presentations. I'll uh, uh, talk uh, briefly uh, what do we mean by societal stability. And then I'll discuss the issue of the link between inequality and violent conflict, which is quite, uh, which is relatively new, only growing in the past uh, 10, 15 years, uh, not before. I mean, the empirical study on inequality and conflict. And then after that, I, I show you the empirical uh, strategy results and conclusions. And if I have time, I'll discuss the implications of the findings. Okay, to see to it the, uh, to know more, uh, to be precise about the country that we are, we, are, we are talking about. So this is a country study of Indonesia. And Indonesia is a, a very large country, the fourth most populous country in the world, 20, uh, 250 million people. And my study is not about uh, the whole country, but only selected uh, provinces in the country where the data is available. So, the study will cover 12 provinces out of 33 provinces in Indonesia. So the, 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 the empirical data is in the form of uh, panel data across the district in 12 provinces uh, during 2005 and 2012, so eight years of uh, time frame. Okay, uh, short background of the study. The first one is what happened in Indonesia was, since the past 15 years, since the, the start of uh, democratic transitions and the, the decentralizations, what we have seen was uh, the increase in inequality. Roughly speaking, from uh, 32, uh, 33 uh, Gini, the Gini index of 33, and now uh, reaching the record high of 41. So from 33, to 41, you can say that around 25% uh, increase in the level of inequality. Uh, the starting point was a stable level of inequality during three decades of the authoritarian government of Suharto between mid 60s till uh, late 90s. And after that, after the democratic transitions, what we have seen was the, the continuous increase in the level of inequality measured in the Gini coefficients from 33 to 41. That's the first one. The second one is, as I already mentioned before, uh, we need to differentiate between, uh, this is more on policy issue, to differentiate clearly between tackling inequality and poverty reductions. You know that 15 years ago, uh, tackling inequality was not in the mainstream. Inequality has been reduced to simply poverty reduction. Because in poverty reduction, it's easy to press the button. Just look at the bottom, uh, the bottom part of the ladder. Yeah? Because it is hard to, to, to look at every, uh, 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 section in the, uh, every segment in the ladder. So that was the, the but now uh, we have to clearly differentiate those two. The, the next one is we need to understand the two effects of inequality. The one is, uh, has been widely uh, examined, examined okay, on the effect of inequality on economic performance. And this paper is about the effect of inequality on the societal stability, just to uh, clearly locate the, 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 the study. And then why we need to look at the effect of inequality on the societal stability, because what we have seen 
in, during the democratic transition in Indonesia, the process of democratic transitions was successful. Yeah? You can say that One Indonesia now is the most stable democracy in Southeast Asia and has been referred as the most, uh, I mean, a case of success story of democratic transitions when, when you are referring to the democratization in the Arab world, for example, in Myanmar or in uh, Thailand, in the in Philippines. So from that perspective, uh, democratic transition in Asia has been very successful, but the process was quite destabilizing. What I mean by uh, destabilizing was the, the, the democratic transitions was, was uh, accompanied by the outbreak of violent conflict. Okay, I'll show you the data uh, in a moment. So what do we mean by social stability? In the large country and very diverse uh, society like Indonesia, the importance of societal stability cannot be uh, overlooked. Uh, it has to be uh, uh, monitored. And what we understand was uh, the two types of uh, collective violence in the forms of separatist violence, some of them uh, uh, reached the level of civil war, and the series of uh, ethnic violence were there uh, accompanying the process of democratic transitions. Not as bad as a democratic transition in other countries, but I'll show you how significant was the the outbreak of violent conflict uh, during the democratic transition. So I'm referring to the uh, data. Okay, this is the data showing you how uh, the, 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 the significant increase in violent conflict during the democratic transition between 1998 to say 2002, 2003. But this is not the object of the study. My study is the uh, data on collective violence in Indonesia after the the chaotic transition has passed. So we are now talking about the data between 19, uh, 2005 and 2012. So the main difference was here, the dominant uh, uh, violence data in Indonesia was dominated by the so-called episodic violence. Episodic violence means uh, the, the collective violence in form of separatist violence and ethnic violence concentrated in terms of time and in terms of uh, location. We call it episodic. But the dominant uh, uh, pattern of collective violence in Indonesia after 2005, okay, after the, the, the dust of democratic transition, the, the destabilizing effect of transitions has passed, we can see that the one that most dominant is the routine kinds of violence. What is routine violence? Routine violence is something routine. You can't really identify the uh, time uh, concentrations. And also, there is no regional concentration. It's spread everywhere and over time. So that's why we call it routine, to differentiate routine and episodic. So this differentiation is really important because we will uh, relate the different types of uh, collective violence and different types of inequality. And we have to match the correct type of inequality and the correct type of collective violence. Otherwise, we'll get messy results. This is the death uh, uh, data, and this is the incidence, but you can see the clear pattern. Now, what about the link between inequality and violent conflict? Uh, the main contrib one main contribution of the paper is to clarify between the two types of inequality and two types of violent conflict. So the important thing here is vertical inequality is the type of inequality that is more important with the small scale routine violence. While the horizontal inequality is the type of inequality that can explain the episodic uh, violence such as civil war and ethnic conflict. So that's the, the first main contributions of the paper to clarify the, the correct type of inequality that can explain the correct types of uh, collective violence. So this is a, a very short uh, literature review about uh, the link between inequality and conflict. So this is uh, basically the, ma uh, the main uh, findings. Uh, the first uh, shocking findings about the link between civil war and inequality. So the role of vertical inequality in civil war was dismissed. There is no effect of inequality on civil war. And this is based on two 
most influential cross-country study on civil war. But one by uh, 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 James Farron and David Leighton, and the other one is from uh, 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 Paul Collier. The law of uh, inequality in civil war is dismissed. It's significant. So, so that's, and it was in, in early uh, 2000s, okay? roughly 10 years ago. But on the other side of the equation, uh, we have Francis Stewart arguing that, or advocating the concept of horizontal inequality. So what matter was not vertical inequality, but horizontal inequality? And later on, that kind of hypothesis has been systematically uh, 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 supported by cross-country evidence by a uh, more recent book by uh, Sederman, Gledich, and uh, Buhauk uh, in 2013, linking horizontal inequality and civil war at cross-country level. The book was published by Cambridge University Press, if I'm not mistaken. So the question now is, what about vert vertical inequality? Shall we just ignore vertical inequality? Okay? Because vertical inequality is the most well-known measure of inequality, not horizontal inequality. Uh, there are a lot of disputes about how to measure uh, horizontal inequality, but uh, 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 how to measure uh, uh, vertical inequality is much more advanced. Okay. So now we are looking at the role of vertical inequality and the small scale sporadic routine violence. So the best way to do this kind of taxonomy, you know, to link the uh, correct type of inequality and the correct type of collective violence is not doing the study at cross country level. But we have to go down into within country level. So you can clearly differentiate two types of inequality using the same source of data. And the second one is you can clearly differentiate between the episodic violence and the routine violence from the same source of data. So methodologically speaking, going, moving from cross-country study into within country study is much more, uh, will give you much better results. So this is the empirical strategy. Okay, this is very simple. Violence is functions of inequality, and then you put everything you want. Okay? So the everything you want is basically to one thing. To, to, to frame the violence from the opportunity hypothesis. So what kind of opportunity in the society, in, from the socioeconomic terms, that will increase the likelihood of violence? So that's uh, what kind of conditions that will increase the opportunity of collective violence to take place. So that's the basic idea of the opportunity hypothesis. So the, the other, other variables is about uh, opportunity hypothesis of uh, collective violence. But our main concern is about the inequality and collective violence. So the coverage of the study is uh, 12 uh, provinces in Indonesia, but the observation is across districts uh, between 2005 and 2012, 2005 and 2012. And then the data, this is uh, something that needs to be explained in a bit detail, but I don't have time to go into the detail, but what I can say is this is the best data on collective violence available in Indonesia. So the origins of the data, so the data is developed by the World Bank, now fully absorbed by the Indonesian government into the Indonesian National Violence Monitoring System. So the system was developed by the World Bank, and the World Bank developed the database based on the UNDP-sponsored database of collective violence introduced in uh, early 2000s, uh, roughly 10 years ago. Okay, so, so we have to set, so the data that I'm using now between 2005 and 2012 is the World Bank data. The data that I showed you about the collective violence during the democratic transitions was the data from the UNDP-sponsored uh, data collections. So the World Bank data is based on the OnSphere data, the UNDP data, but expanded and uh, more sophisticated. So, of course, uh, it's a kind of improvements in terms of data collections. Yes, I, have, I still have uh, uh, plenty of time, okay? No problem. Uh, so this is the coverage of the study. 12 provinces out of 33 provinces in Indonesia. So you can see the spread of the, the red dots. So what is important about the, the 12 provinces? So the 12 provinces that we are studying now, between 2005 and, 2000 and, 2005 and 2012, they are considered as a high conflict areas during the democratic transitions. 
but the type of violence now in the previously high conflict areas is not about the episodic violence in terms of Sionist violence or uh, in, uh, ethnic violence, but more on the routine violence. So we'll be looking at the effect of vertical inequality on routine violence, mainly that's the, the main uh, focus of the study. So this is the result, very simple result. The finding is the violence increasing effect of higher inequality. So inequality is bad for social harmony. Uh, inequality is bad for societal stability, if you like. That's the first key uh, uh, findings. The second one. Uh, this is about uh, considering the multicolonality and the possible relationship between uh, the independent variables. So the effect, okay, the effect of inequality on violence has considered the possible systematic relationship between inequality and income, as postulated by Kuznets. So the Kuznets equation is embedded in the uh, violence regressions, so in, in, in the forms of uh, two-stage uh, regressions. I'll show you the regressions uh, later on. And the third main finding was, when we find the Kuznets type relationship between income and inequality, we also find the same kind of relationship between violence and income. And this is something new. Because usually, in terms of income, the finding was income uh, always has a violence reducing effect on violence. So the violence uh, reducing effect of higher income. But in this case, we have the inverted uh, U curve relationships. So this is the summary of the findings. So this is my main uh, uh, regression. But here, uh, Gini is the functions of income. So the Kuznets equations is embedded here. And this re kind of relationships is, uh, uh, comes later. Previously, we have this kind of relationship. But the problem was, if you don't have this one, hard to connect this two. So how to connect this, the first U inverted U curve, and the second inverted U curve? Before, before this findings was, was there, we just have uh, the best guess that we can, we can, we can, we can say about uh, how to link those two Kuznet types of uh, relationships. So when we bring the inequality into the picture, we can clearly see. So the process of the upswing of uh, uh, violence when the income goes up, and then uh, uh, the decline of uh, violence when income continues to increase is about the, the inequality. And you have this kind of relationship between inequality and income that create this kind of relationship. So that's roughly the findings. Uh, and the findings is detailed in this kind of regression. So I'm not going to, into detail of this one. So this is the controls are about uh, uh, the opportunity hypothesis for violence. And we control for the fractionalization uh, uh, based on ethnic uh, fractionalization or religious uh, fractionalizations. And we have the main uh, variables here, Gini coefficient. So here we try the direct relationship between Gini and uh, routine violence, incidence of routine violence, without considering the Kuznets types relationship between income and inequality. And you see the funny results. And then the result is more intuitive if you uh, put the functions of the Kuznets relationship here instead of uh, the, the Gini. So you have here the periodic Gini. So here Gini is the functions of income and income squared. And then here we test the uh, Kuznets type relationship between income and violence. And where we have uh, the three findings. So this is about uh, 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 routine violence. Now we try to look at ethnic violence, the less dominant uh, type of Collective, uh, collective violence. Okay, let me stop. This is the main findings of my uh, uh, regressions. And the findings is more or less consistent if you check with the ethnic violence and also if you use the violent graph. Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you very much. <laughs>